Welcome back to Affiliated, everybody. Thank you for joining and listening to wherever you're from. We always love to hear about well, how and where you listen. I am Thomas McMahon with ClickBank, and joining me is Kyle and his Halloween Porg costume. Thanks, Woo. Kyle. Yeah, I figured, you know, we should do something to tell people that today is Halloween, but we probably won't maintain for the whole episode. As well, in case the Porg mask was enough, I did make sure to wear my metal sweater today, even though it's boy genius, which is hardly metal at all, but it still has a devil on it. So spooky season is here. I'll and, be really curious um, to see when this said, episode drops and it's not yeah. really close to Halloween. <laughs> yeah, it's in January and we decided yeah. to do this, but that's okay. People know that we record these at a different time now. Hooray. Yes. Um, so, but with that, we have some pretty awesome guests today who aren't spooky unless you're making some spooky kick-ass videos. And I already swore and we've made it one minute in. So hurrah. But I'll let you introduce them. <laughs> yes, we've got Peter Zemes and Stefan Banica from C4 Media joining us from, is it Medellin or are you in Bogota or somewhere else? Uh, we're in Medellin right now. Medellin, yeah. Colombia. Well, thanks for joining, guys. Yeah. Gosh, you said that so cool, Thomas. Did I say it right? Medellin. Medellin. Is what I, <laughs> I, think it, I think it's actually Medellin. Medellin? But, oh, there's like a je, je. Je. Yeah, yeah, Medellin, yeah. The two L's. Not a G. No, like that. I made it I've Italian ever, for some yeah. reason, but... I've only ever chatted with expats from there who all say it slightly differently, so I've picked it up. <laughs> I took a best guess. Well, nice. Well, thanks for joining, guys. We're stoked to dive into kind of what's working now in video advertising. But I'd love to kick it off with you and Peter and Stefan. Like, how did y'all meet and how did C4 get started? Yeah. Um, I can tell the story if you want. Yeah, you tell the yeah. story. It's funnier from your perspective. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, started. I mean, I met Stefan probably about a year and a half ago in Toronto. Uh, I have my dog brand, Pup Labs, which we've been scaling, and I wanted to shoot some content for the brand. And Stefan was doing a lot of like video reels and shorts with some really big names, including like Hermosi, Peterson, some just like the biggest internet marketers, uh, Kino Body as well. And so we met in Toronto, and I was like, Stefan, you know, come do a shoot with me. Uh, so we spent three days together. And then I'm like, this guy is an absolute gangster. And basically I moved to Colombia, and then I convinced him to move to Colombia, leave all his clients and come work only for me. And then we launched the video production company later on. <laughs> that must have been a strong sell. Yeah. 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 <laughs> has, it, yeah. has it been good, Stefan, or do you regret that fully? I mean, if I regretted it, I wouldn't be in Colombia six months later. <laughs> like, it was hilarious. The way it went was like, yeah. I was like doing a sales gig. Uh, I wasn't really making the cash I wanted. I wasn't really making money. Didn't really enjoy it. It was kind of like, I'm like, ah, I really kind of regret this job. Then I'm like, and Peter's like, hey, dude, you want to come to Colombia and help me shoot a VSL next week? <laughs> I'm like, hmm, I've never been to Colombia. I don't speak Spanish. I don't look Colombian. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I go a week later in Colombia. And then he's like, yeah, we don't need to shoot this VSL. But like, you want to just like stay here? I'm like, yeah, let me just stay in Colombia. And then so we, we got here. Yeah. And then, you know, we took the Reels idea that Stefan was doing because Reels are all about engagement, right? And the VSL is no different. It's how long you can hold someone's attention. And so we just took that short form Reels and just made it into longer form and used that kind of knowledge that he had had and had developed with working for two years with some of the biggest names and put it into VSL production. Um, and that's kind of how the company came about. And I needed it for my brands. You know, we got four or five VSLs kind of like scaling. And, you know, and then we started opening up to clients in my mastermind and everyone's been loving the work. Um, we've got some of the biggest clients in the industry now. And we had some of the, probably arguably, you know, honestly, the best VSLs in the business by far, because we can do things that no one else can do, mainly because of Stefan's background and his education in the kind of TikTok era where you're competing and, you know, against millions and millions of creators every day and holding someone's attention. He's been able to do that and explode uh, those brands in those niches. And so when he came to VSL, it was just like, for him, it's easy mode because he's not competing against anyone else. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. how it's Yeah. That's awesome though. I think uh, so many people see, we are like inundated with short form media and it might be the downfall of Western civilization, but it's definitely something we're enjoying consuming as it all takes us down, right? Um, yeah. So I love that you're bringing that blend to the VSL world. Um, and kind of creating that increased engagement, which I think leads to one of the big questions like, well, how is that different? And what are you guys seeing right now in a video that's really working? Because I think just give like a broad spectrum of everyone that's going on. In general, there's been a lot of video that it seems like it's in flux. Maybe what was working before isn't working the same. And so really exciting to see what you guys are doing that are work that's working right now. Because I think a lot of people are maybe in that um, limbo state where they're looking for an innovation um, because their offers aren't converting like they used to. Yeah, I mean, you could speak to that. Yeah, so, I mean, 
the first thing is you got to take the principle of keeping people's attention. Like that's the most important thing. That's why video is so popular. Like over 99% of the internet is video now for a reason, because people don't read as much. I mean, I don't know last time you guys read a book. I haven't read a book in like two years, but I'll watch like long form videos. I'll listen to audiobooks, stuff that's more, you know, stimulating to the senses, right? Like video brings that extra level to what's being written and what's being said. And then you got to use that video to keep people's attention more. So the main thing we've done is apply all the attention principles of short form content, because that's like the most competitive attention medium out there, because it's just a bunch of random people putting out the most ridiculous content out there. And if you're an educational influencer, you're trying to teach people stuff in a platform that's all about entertainment. So you have to keep yeah. people's attention talking about something that's more boring rather than something interesting. The first thing is attention. And then with that, you know, we took that and put it into long form video as well. And like the number one principle is like, it can't be boring. Like the static long played out starts. Like if you have a video and it takes like five minutes to get going, it has a really boring start, not that captivating. The music's bland, you know, the vi visuals aren't stimulating. People are going to click off right away. It's like the most important thing in short form content is the first three seconds. And like in a VSL, like a long form video, it is the, the lead, the first three to five minutes is the most important. Cause if they don't watch that, you can have the best last 10 minutes of the video. No one's going to see that at all. So the first five minutes is like key. And the way you keep that as captivating as possible is, you know, combining like rapid changes in, in video. You want to change something every two to three seconds to make people engage. You want to have music change. You want to have a sound effect that brings a story to life. Like let's say, you know, there's uh, someone like running on a treadmill, you know, you add that panting sound effect there to bring that to life, make people feel it. You know, you change the, the B roll, the video on screen every two to three seconds to keep that novelty there. You add text, big bold text to emphasize certain words. Like let's say you're selling a supplement and there's like a specific ingredient like in there. That's like the game changer, the reason your supplement sells, that's the one you want to put bold on screen. So people remember it keeps their attention, it captivates them all those little things. Yeah. And I think one of the big differences that we've kind of done with C4 now is that cause I've hired a ton of VSL editors in the past for my own stuff. And I've noticed that the VSL editors themselves, they're not marketers, like they're great video guys, but they're not marketers. And that's kind of an issue because you need a marketer to be actually doing the videos because it's about holding attention and it's about retaining that interest in the video over 40, 50, 60 minutes. And the only way to do that is to tap into the marketing aspect through video, not just having a world-class cinematic editor, because anyone can go and shoot a Hollywood film and do all the, the lights and the camera and the action, but to keep someone's attention while their phone is buzzing with Instagram, TikTok, text messages all the time, like it's very, very difficult, especially today. So I think it's about being a video editor who knows marketing more than just being a good video editor. Yeah, no, that's great. Cause that kind of answered the other question. I think it was like, how do you balance the right type of attention, right? Cause, um, there's probably ways you keep people watching a video, but then they don't convert at the end. So, yeah. um, balancing the right emotion to keep attention and keep gravitating people towards, like you said, entertainment when otherwise information might be boring. So, um, I don't know if you could give me some examples of some things you've seen that, didn't work with an attention standpoint that you commonly see that are probably driving people away um, versus maybe something that you could share recently that was a, a little, maybe a string of attention getters that you guys saw really captured um, maybe in a lead or within that first minute or something like that, something that really uh, grabbed people and, and had some great success on your attention recently. I think like the Ozempic BSL for sure. Yeah, that one was good. I mean, first to cover what, doesn't really work. I would say like the standard whiteboard VSL or any video with just whiteboard and text on there. Um, that is dying very quickly, especially if you have a weak spokesperson, because all that's there is text on screen plus like audio to keep the person engaged. And if the script isn't absolutely perfect, like it's, it's not going to do that well. And I've discussed this with Peter all the time and we're like, I've seen like this one, one guy I know he did an entire whiteboard VSL with AI voiceover, like just did it himself. And I mean, it was converting, but he's not scaling it. And like the reason he's not scaling it is because that just won't captivate on such a broad scale of so many people and such small attention with just that little whiteboard on screen, which is text. It's not emotionally engaging. Yeah, I think the other thing too we've seen a decline in is actually face to camera, to be honest, like having mm. a spokesperson speak to camera. Uh, the reason being is that, first of all, 
the person that's like an actress or an actor, for example, that's speaking or a real doctor, they often don't have like proper media training or camera training. Um, the actors, some of them do, but the other thing that they don't have is proper vocal training. And like, as we discussed before this podcast, like when our audio was garbage, a lot of people will sit through a good video, but they will never sit through terrible audio, never. And it's one of the things that we've kind of come to where like people doing the selfie style where the iPhone camera is like the mic, like you're not getting the best audio quality. And so we've kind of started to move away from a lot of that um, face to camera. The other advantage too, is that we can test faster with new leads as a result. So if we're shooting just B-roll, correct? The only thing that we actually need to test a new lead is a new voiceover script. That's it. We don't need someone to shoot the camera. We don't have to re-edit. We just need to put in the audio and swap out the old audio and then go again. Um, and it makes testing way faster, which at the end of the day, that's kind of like how you win in this game of VSLs and ads. Is like, how fast can you test? How much can you test? How cheap can you test? How often can you test? Because you just are one spot test away from a million a month. Like that is the name of the game. Um, and so for us, it's about how can we create an opportunity for the marketers, for our clients, for ourselves to test 10 times faster um, without losing any of the quality. You know, so that's kind of what we're coming to. Like Once to, you have something that's working there, will you then bring in like a face, if you will, and then see if that beats the B-roll or are you just kind of keep, keep running with the B-roll? The thing with the B-roll is if you do it right and you have really high quality B-roll, which we do for almost all of our clients, yeah. is you use the B-roll to build that persona and connection with the spokesperson. Like there's yeah. one VSL right now. I think it's like gone over a hundred million in sales. One that everyone sees now they're basically like similar to, to V-Shred on how much they're they're making right now yeah. and they're literally just with a high quality spokesperson like voiceover and then high quality b-roll and you feel that connection to the to the doctor on screen it's like it's as if like they're just talking face to the camera but they're not and it tells more of a story too like when you just see someone talking face to the camera like old school youtube like hey uh we're gonna talk about this blah 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 you get bored the visuals are the same it's hey i'm looking at this person's face the whole time rather than a bunch of b-roll cinematic stuff going on instead yeah and like when you have when the do- like if we're shooting a doctor, for example, in their office, which I've done for my dog brands, we'll fly out to the vet center and shoot them there. There's so much authority created with like our vet interacting with patients, interacting with dogs, feeding them like the dog treats that we're selling. There's just it's almost unbeatable in terms of authority pieces versus someone like talking to camera, even if it's a professional camera, because I mean, there's just when you see the social proof involved and like the doctor in action, their daily lifestyle, they're no longer just like some random person talking to the internet. They like are a 3D person who works in Arizona at the world class Paul's clinic, who then helps these dogs and helped um, Jessica, who brought in her dog because she was sick. You know, there's all this authority pieces that is very, very hard to convey when it's just talking to camera. Okay, thank you. That's helpful for me to picture there. So instead of having them just talking at the camera, you're actually showing them in their environment with their voiceover. Yep. or voiceover kind of so you're bringing those story elements into a visual element as yeah. well okay that's that's really interesting thank you yeah like if we have yeah. copy for example that's like you know i was burning the midnight candle and you know researching pap- you know papers and studying for hours trying to solve this like cure you know we can shoot them in the nighttime work on the computer rubbing their eyes right and it brings the copy to life instead of just like them talking to camera in like a well-lit room right it's a totally different cinematic experience Gotcha. I, I wanted to go back. You mentioned some like example time frames for like a VSL, like 40, 60 minutes, kind of that kind of thing. With the limited time frame now, are you messing around with, or I should say, expend, attention span? Are you messing around with any shorter formats? Are you seeing those when at all? Or are you kind of sticking with the longer form video sales letter when it comes to that selling mechanism? Um, I still prefer longer form at the end of the day. Um, I have seen like higher conversion rates on shorter form, but the AOVs go to, they just fall through the ground. Um, oh, interesting. It's very okay. hard to scale on cold traffic with a short form VSL without like a brand. Um, the long form just has all the elements. And for me, like they can range from 30 to 60 minutes. Like some of my dog VSLs are about 35 minutes, 30 minutes, even like 25 minutes. Some of the, like the other niches I'm in, like they're closer to 60 minutes. For me, it's about writing as much copy as needed and not a single word more and whatever I think is going to be needed to convert the customer on cold traffic. Um, But I have yet to find that short form meets long form in the VSL cold traffic acquisition space. You know, there's other spaces like reels and brand building and e-com and stuff that will probably benefit from shorter form stuff, but not on cold traffic scalability. 
there is one thing we're doing. Like this, this is a little hack and literally anyone could do like today to basically like make their long, longer BSL a little bit shorter and a little bit more attention grabbing. You basically just speed it up by like 10%, maybe 15%, depending what sounds good. And now you're taking all that info, all that amazing copy and visuals and just making it shorter and a little bit faster paced yeah. to keep people's attention better rather than like, let's say it's a slower voiceover, more drawn out. You can now speed that up and keep attention more. Yeah, because then you could press the copy. The audio doesn't really change. If you go above 15%, it can get a little wonky. Yeah. But if you speed so up by like a Like a chipmunk a bit, yeah. Yeah, we found about 12% to be the kind of the sweet spot between like speed and not losing any like of the copy in the audio. Mm. And I'm sure that depends on too which voice actor you're using yeah. a bit and their cadence, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah so just, don't just plug in 12%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, make it work for you. Okay, yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead, Kyle. Oh, I was just going to go back to the original point. I just, I, I really loved what you guys were talking about that um, it's not necessarily that it's using B roll, but it's custom B roll. So customizing the B roll to then kind of bridge the gap of authenticity. So not necessarily, it's almost higher quality B roll than I think what uh, people are using in a lot of VSLs, which I find really interesting. So giving, give an idea. Um, if you give me an idea, like how much B roll, if say you were going out with like the vet um, or maybe it was a doctor, um, kind of this is a two part in general, how much B roll might you film with them? I, I, I guess it could be script, you know, dependent, but curious, like how much you'd normally film. And then the other side is being that you're doing more B roll with the individual to show that, that authority, um, when and how are you bringing them on camera and inter, inter, introducing the voice, um, to the audience, or are you just bypassing that as a whole at this point? So like the amount of B-roll, we, we plan it out ahead. Like we, we've done like so many shoots and now we just created like a, a master, master shot list of just like every shot we need. So like we can mm -hmm. we get it done fairly quickly because we know what we need. And the thing is, it's not that you need a lot. You just need the key shots done correctly. Yeah. Like you, you need mm -hmm. the ones where the person is doing their job. They're interacting. You need the ones where the person is, is, is th thinking and kind of in that like struggle moment. Like they have the problem. They don't know what to do. They need that moment where they're solving the problem. They're, they're working hard and then they, they figure it out and they're working with the formulas a little bit. Let's say it's a supplement, you know, figuring out how to make that supplement, et cetera. And when you have that list, it's just, it's not a lot. It's about the key key points, right? Yeah, we, we takes about, I mean, it depends. Once we find like the appropriate doctor's office or whatever the spokesperson is, uh, finding the actor and everything, but we can, we can knock out a shoot in like a couple hours now really fast, um, oh, nice. especially if we have products. Um, but yeah, it is about executing on the fundamentals of what the copy and the story and the copy is, which is just the hero story. You know, the doctor comes in, has all these patients, is interacting with patients, can't find the cure, so he's upset. He's calling all his patients. And you just get every one of those shots. He's teaching other experts to create more authority. He's working with dogs, working with patients. Yeah. And then you know those yeah. emotional inflection points that you need, basically. You know exactly yep. what you need. Those yeah, those we have a master you. doc, which we we reserve for our clients right now we may be sharing yeah. one yeah, as i say we don't want to we don't want to take all your secrets out right I do. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> thomas wants that yeah, yeah. no that, that makes a ton of sense i really really like that i think that makes a ton of sense for sure yep yeah and we can shoot any like any custom b-roll pretty much on the planet uh down here in columbia we have offices we have penthouses we have like access to any sort of avatar or kind of like typical type of vsl to be honest whether it's supplements dating making money online lottery like literally anything like the the, the funny thing is it's like a skill set from my past because i started like video about four years ago just like just even filming video like we didn't even realize like when we started filming the custom bureau we didn't realize how much advantages we had because we yeah. we have over like ten thousand dollars worth of camera equipment lighting everything we need to make stuff look high quality yeah. and i've been trained in that for so long it just like the camera quality really makes a difference. Like yeah. if you shoot with an iPhone, it just doesn't have the same difference as like a professional camera for that B-roll. It's not even about the camera, it's about the lens. It's about like how it's set up. Is it on a tripod? Is it freehand? What angles are you shooting? Are you shooting up or down um, to make the spokesperson look bigger or smaller? Um, they, there's so many like cinematic elements that come into play here. But the fundamental is the fact that like it's a marketing video project where like we get the key inflection points from the story through video instead of just someone talking to the camera about, yeah, I was struggling burning the midnight oil, blah, 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 yeah. blah. Instead of he was actually on the computer in the middle of the night rubbing his eyes tired, you know, and that's where the marketing element of the video comes in. 
No, I really like that. I like it a lot. That's awesome. Appreciate that. Appreciate as much of the secrets as we could get. Out of <laughs> Thomas is going to ask for more now. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious like, with the formatting, like we saw, I think, you know, a few years ago, it broke out with like, you know, the, the giant, the full screen video versus kind of the embedded, then the vertical video for VSL on mobile versus desktop and things like that. Like, are you messing around with different formats? Like what's working best for you when you start kind of looking at how to actually present the video? Yeah. I mean, we just optimize for like whatever platform it's on. Like if it's a desktop, we keep it, you know, full screen, et cetera. Then if it's mobile, we make sure it's converted to mobile and it looks good. It's clear. It's easy to see on an iPhone and it just keeps your attention that way. It's really just optimizing about what platform it's on and then do that. Yeah, there isn't too, like, for me, it's always about testing. Like I'll still test like full screen versus like little screen on desktop, to be honest, just because I've seen some swings recently and like what's winning full screen doesn't always win anymore. Not sure why. Maybe people are just too used to it now. I have no idea. But yeah, it's eight then day will produce pretty much anything we needed to test. And again, it comes back to just testing. Yep, that makes sense. And then when you look at the ads versus the video, like the VSL, you look at like running like a video ad, what are what's winning there for y'all right now? Um, for us, like it, honestly, the ads are similar to how Stefan used to do reels, which is just in keeping engagement. But one of the things that's been winning for like, at least me on my dog side and like some of my other um, brands that I have, is really like changing the first two to three seconds of the b-roll in the same ad so we'll have like variation one of an ad and it's working well we'll get five new variations with just different intros same script same audio just different visuals uh whether mm. it's like random stuff like food and eggs and bacon or it's like someone shooting a blowtorch like it doesn't really matter what it is it's just to generate attention um and that's been working really well for us one one more thing that I've noticed is very important in that kind of first few minutes is like you want to basically convey as much like emotional information to the watcher as possible. That's why in some ads like we end up using like big bold letters, like big title, and then we use kind of a split screen where it's like multiple B rolls together, and that kind of gives like multiple points to look at, which gives more information. But then also because they see those two B rolls if they're combined properly, it makes them feel something new, right? Like for for an yeah. example, let's say it's um. It's for, let's say it's for a dating offer and you're like starting the ad and basically it's like has a big bold title and then shows like on the left, happy marriage. And then on the right, it's like heartbreak. The, the man is devastated. His wife left him. And now it kind of shows like that potential for the story and people get more curious, conveys more emotion to what like is happening. Yeah. Or if you have like a, let's say you have a conversation going on, like in the copy, like someone's texting someone, like just show the text messages in the visuals. And like you oh, have right. the like, text bubbles coming up on screen, yeah, like that. Yeah. Up, mm. And you have like the pinging sounds because those pinging sounds are so ingrained in our dopamine receptors now that it just like it just it, it's instant attention. That's probably like the sickest hack we've come across. Is like, if you ever want to keep someone's attention, just dopamine, just do the the <laughs> sound, the it's ding, like, yeah. yeah, the yeah. ding, that damn ding. Whether know? it's anxiety or excitement, it's something yeah. that you'll immediately exactly. pay attention to, even if you choose to ignore it. You'll be like, ah, crap. So that's yeah. awesome. Or imagine. If it's like a dating offer, having the Tinder notification sound, whatever that is, come through, yeah. right? And like things like that, matching where they're at. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, a couple of things on the attention getting that I was thinking about. Um, so, are you seeing? So, I, I love that lots of times the B roll could be random. Like, it, but do you guys go with like maybe themes of different B rolls you'll test? So, say like, hey, I really want to go off like strong curiosity play. Let's really make like weird stuff. Or do you see that maybe if we go and try and gain attention around say negative emotions or like what you said you had the dopamine hit thing with the sound and auditory stuff but um are you seeing maybe is it is it offer contingent or are you guys starting to maybe see some trends and um or themes around what tends to capture people's attention besides obviously the sound that you just gave i'm trying to think of some other stuff yeah i mean i mean when it comes to like let's say the supplement space for example the curiosity is very very popular like this seven second hack and then then you show b-roll of like the hack but you make it something like completely weird like something that people have never seen before and it adds this kind of like shock curiosity factor like whoa like what if i just eat this green tea and then i sprinkle this little powder and then like mix it with like a fork but upside down that's gonna make me like lose weight faster like something that like really spike the curiosity really works for like the supplement space yeah, like it doesn't have to, so you said, and the, and they're spinning with the fork upside down. So you either think they exactly. don't know how to use utensils, or you're like, just like, what is this? 
because like the top of the fork it like destroys the powder so like you need to use that like bottom of the fork it just makes it better mm. yeah like the thing is it doesn't actually have to make it's sense just... sometimes yeah it just has to create so much curiosity that you're like wtf but like let me learn yeah more. well gosh have you seen there's that i know he's all over this different reels platforms the rage bait guy yeah. who just yeah drags on a three minute video it's just nonsense whether it's a recipe whether it's a magic trick with no matter what it is and they're yeah. so good at getting just like you know what he's doing but you still watch it <laughs> it's yeah. like ah it's like there, there's but, something about this like trend of like people like cutting food and like doing stuff like that like preparing food like a little speed ramp like it's faster people like cutting yeah. apples preparing pineapples mm -hmm. sprinkling salt mixing stuff like i don't know just the satisfying feeling it gives you that just people keep watching it yeah. yeah. And then they have audio over something completely different. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I see that often, especially with, uh, like people speed running, it's like a Roblox game or something mm -hmm. Minecraft and they have a totally different thing going on in the audio. So, uh, that's yeah, really interesting. Interesting. Gaming is a good industry to like study because those guys have a ton of money to burn on ads. And so I'll study like, like clash of clans. If you watch their ads, like they're so yeah. hilarious. It's like, someone in like an yeah. ice bath and then it switches to clash of clans you're like what the hell <laughs> or like a, a blowtorch i saw one but like they know what they're doing and so we just rip from them we're not like geniuses we just know how to copy better than everyone else i think wow that's super smart though that's a, and you're right that's a great example those guys the what they're doing to get downloads it is impressive and they always yep. have really good ads for sure yeah and then you know what, where do you f no not, not what you saw at all <laughs> it's like <laughs> It's like, oh, I thought this was like really cool. And then just like this, like tap and flash of clans game. Yeah. I was yeah, curious exactly. how you're to go back to like the, uh, the VSL components now, like when you're presenting the offer, when the VSL has gotten to the point where you're actually presenting the offer, mm -hmm. like, are you finding certain ways that it's working better now than it used to, or any kind of split testing wins there? I mean, yeah. One thing we're doing, we're focusing on, especially with that, like, that last little bit when the offer is presented, et cetera, is just making sure it's very high quality and desirable. Like that's the point where people are already invested. Like if someone watched that point, they're interested, they want to know what it is. They want to know what the product is. And like, you just want to make it look as desirable as possible. Like you want to make the product look like, Hey, mm -hmm. I want to buy this. Even if I, the person never saw in their life, they want to buy this present it in this high quality way. It looks like a million dollar product. And then like just present it really cleanly, really high quality B roll, et cetera, a few animations. And that's kind of the, the focus we have there to just make it look really desirable. And that's where like the custom B-roll comes in. So like if you have like, for example, we have our doctor actually using our supplements like on the dogs in the videos, right? Versus like just us showing bottles on screen, which is what yeah. every other VSL on the planet does. Like I can't lie. My doctor's actually using this, you know, my vet in this case. And so that's where it comes even like we just, it's so much authority. It's so much trust. It's so many, so many good selling elements in just the, the hero using the product on camera, not just like an image of them, like smiling, like, which could be faked very easily, but actually them using in video in real time, the product. Um, and that's where like, it really stands out. Yeah. I I mean, that makes a lot of sense when you look at, Oh, go ahead, Thomas. No, you start, you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> I say, I love, I love that. Cause it, it really does mirror a lot of what you see in standard television, right? Like what we saw in traditional media for years and years and years, work for the same demographics you're most likely targeting and you're in your supplement VSLs. It's amazing how much we ignore the mediums and the media that they already love. But like, whether it's like a normal as seen on TV or a, an infomercial, which again, very similar direct response styles. Um, you bet somebody with authority actually uses the product live um, on that TV. So it makes a ton of sense to do that for the reveal. So yeah, like really, if you really take like any, you're taking any infomercial, right? Just think about infomercials. Like they always have the product right there and the hero is yeah. using it on screen in front of you demonstrating how awesome it is. And so we're just taking that element, you know, infomercials have sold like, whatever ridiculous amount of money, like proactive alone was a billion dollar pro like program itself. Yeah. The sham wow, the slap. What's that one? The slap one? Slap shot. Slap shot. Slap shot. Yeah. 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 I mean, if, if the customer, if the hero is using it, why wouldn't I use it? Why wouldn't I give it a try? Especially when there's a 60 day money back guarantee, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, exactly. So it's, and it's easy for demonstrable products like a slap chop, but same with the supplements. If it's just as much as them taking it, giving it to a dog, giving it to yeah. a patient, right? Showing them like, Hey, here you go. I'm handing you the bottle. It signifies something um, that matters. I just, Again, it's it's an element we don't see that often um, yep. in VSLs, but we see 
everywhere else in traditional media. So I think it's just really great you guys bring that in. Like you said, you might not re you reinvent the wheel, but you sure know how to copy the best looking ones. So exactly. um, better than others. So, so that, it's super smart. Love that. Yeah. Then there's one more thing like with the B-roll that's like really adds that level of like movie quality to it and really hooks people in more is like even with Dr. B-roll, like when they're using the product, they're not breaking the fourth wall. Like they're not communicating with the camera saying, hey, I'm doing this. I'm yeah. going to use it. Can I give it to the dog? No they're, no, they're just kind of doing it. And that adds that level of like, hey, I'm the watcher and this is just them living their life. They're not trying to show me anything. Yeah, they're not trying to sell me. No. Right? They're just like using the product as normal. Yeah. Maybe you should try it too and give me $5,000 in the process. <laughs> you know, you bring up a great point. I'd love to talk about that a little bit more because I do find it very interesting is um, you mentioned the concept of where the audience is, is during the video, right? So oftentimes we don't think about if we're filming this, am I a watcher or am I a participant, right? So that could change based on the way that you film it. Um, so you guys kind of talk to that. If Like how do you change certain shots based on where you want the audience to be placed? Like for example, podcasts know that if you're doing like a like something like this, we want people to feel a part of the conversation, not listening to a conversation, right? So I'm um, not outside in there. They want to feel like they're a part of it, having with us. So you change the way you do things, right? So um, what are some ways that you guys are maybe capturing um, the location or where do you want the audience to feel like they are during the video? Yeah. So I realized I was making my air quotes out of the video too, so people could see that. <laughs> so the, the first thing with like, if you want the audience to be more of a spectator or if you're like, or if you want some B-roll to break the fourth wall, it also kind of depends on like the vibe of the video. Like if you look at all these serious videos, like think about any like romance movie that's really sad or like any like super serious movie, like any, um, what's it, Chris, Christopher Nolan movie, all serious, the characters yeah. never ever break the fourth wall and it builds that story, builds that seriousness, builds that tension because they're not like they're it's never broken. But if you look at Deadpool, which is like a comedy, hundred percent, he's always like pauses, pause the movie and then start talking to the audience directly and adds this kind of humor this more like kind of breaks the tension kind of casual type of video so it depends on like where we are in the vsl like if it's more serious point we don't want to break the fourth wall but if it's more like a casual or funnier point you can break it and then like for like camera angles and stuff like we do like more we do like close-up angles and we do wider angles wider angles are great for showcasing the location like where it is give more info kind of like a setup shot but then the closer angles add that extra like emotion makes you feel like you're right there like let's say it's a close-up like over the shoulder shot of like a doctor talking to a patient really serious you feel like you're right there you feel like you're seeing that conversation happen because it like looks so realistic adds that like re realism element mm -hmm. it really channels the time that your doctor told you why do you keep eating sugar and i was like damn it it tastes good he's like but so yeah. do your feet and i'm like they'll keep them i was like ah wheelchairs like will help me get to sugar faster <laughs> Because imagine yeah. that shot, but it's like like super wide, and you see all this info. You see nurses going, everything like that. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't add that same emotion, the same feel. Because like when you're being told by your doctor, yeah. you know, stop eating sugar. It's not like a it's a close up, not like a super wide one, right? So you kind of want to yeah. Think about what would that shot be like in real life? What would they feel? What would they see? Then let's use that mm -hmm. for the shot. Yeah, we want to see their disappointment right up close, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was curious about on the client side of things, when you're working with clients versus your own in-house offers, are there certain challenges that arise um, in building out these video elements for them? And is there, like, I guess the question here is, if I'm looking to work with someone like you, how can I be the best client for y'all so you can produce the best content for me? Um, I think the biggest thing is mostly like hands off and trusting us you know, I've got like close to like nine figures in sales in my belts so from a marketing standpoint. Like we know what we're doing. Stefan is getting close to that point uh, fairly quickly. I think like the our clients that, that we love and the clients we hate, the difference is that the clients that we love give us the script and then they just are like, I'll wait till the video's done and we're good to go. They just like, they trust us to do our job. Um, and I mean, I wouldn't have Stefan on the team and like wouldn't have this company with him if I didn't trust him to do all my own stuff in house. Like he does all the stuff like the, the most recent video that he produced for me uh, for my dog brand is like 380% ROAS day zero on cold traffic right now. Like it's very, not bad. very, not bad. Bad. it's not <laughs> bad, you know, like, <laughs> not, not bad at all. I'll like, take it. <laughs> yeah. And the whole point is that it's because we take this whole video production to another level because at the end of the day, people are used to kind of the Netflix style, YouTube quality now, 4K, HD, all that. 
And mm -hmm. when you don't deliver a VSL or ad in that manner, people get lost. Their dopamine isn't activated as much and the result they're not paying attention, which is the name of the game in, in marketing really. And like one more yeah. thing that, that like the best clients do versus ones that we have more like road bumps with is like when they give us the script and they give us like the directions, like they have their stuff ready, they know exactly what they need and yeah. they let us do our job. Like if, if let's say the product name now has to be changed three times because they messed up in the script or like yeah. they don't have testimonials ready or like the, the doctor's name is wrong or he's like from China when he's supposed to be from Canada. Like it's like that stuff slows the production process down and makes us have to adjust little details that if they were ready from the start, would speed up production way faster and make it such an easier process for everyone. Yeah, Cause we know speed is king. I mean, it still comes down to testing, right? And one of the things that we've been able to do now with the agency and like building of the team is that we can do VSLs. If we need to, we can do VSLs in like 12 days. Full production, B-roll, everything. Wow. Like less yeah. than two weeks in and out. You know, Stefan hates when I say that out loud, but that's what we can yeah, do. Yeah, I was waiting to look at Stefan's face to see, like, did he just die a little as soon as Peter? My, uh, the, my stress <laughs> levels are never higher than when Peter's like, hey, can we get this done in like six days? And I'm like, bro. <laughs> so, we need to which, sleep. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, I don't know what can we and should we. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what everyone else does in, in VSL, like whoever else is producing them, but I know that the huge unfair competition that we have is that when we can reduce VSLs in two weeks instead of four or six or whatever else the timelines are, it means we can test twice, three, four times as fast, which ultimately we win then. It's impossible to fail at that point, which ultimately is kind of the question. Like how do we make it impossible to fail to scale on cold traffic? Well, we test five times faster. That's really On the, the testing side there, like how do you work with the copy team on the testing side? Like are you getting different hooks to test? Are you coming up with your own hooks? Or are you just purely doing the video? Like how does that relationship work with the copy and the video elements? Um, so for clients, it's usually us just producing the video and working with the, the copywriter that wrote the script to produce new leads for the most part or new intros. Um, as well, sometimes new closes, depending on like the copywriter, the owner, et cetera, for the in-house stuff for me, it's testing everything, new leads, new scripts. I mean, the recent one that I wrote was basically 10 variations between two closes, five leads and like two body copies. Um, so yeah, it really depends who you're working with. Gotcha. So there's a collaborative, and I was curious, like when is the right time to approach a company like C4 media? It's like, Hey, I've got the copy it's getting written. Like at what point? should I be chatting with y'all and going, does this make sense to work with y'all? Or is there, is there too soon of a point? Is there too late where it's like, Oh, we're now we're kind of behind things. What's that ideal phase? You're still naming your product. Obviously not then. Which yeah. Is yeah. Like <laughs> I think as long as you know what your offer is, we can start having a conversation because let's say it's a supplement offer in like the dental health space, for example, you know, if you know, that's going to come out in like eight weeks, like tell us, we'll be able to like go reserve a dental office, start finding doctors and stuff to help you out ahead of time. And that speeds up the entire process. Um, and then once the copy is done, it's just like, it's game time on our end. There is no, it's not really a wrong time, really. You know, we've had clients come to us after they produce VSLs with other guys and come have us revise them. Um, so there's different levels and different types of services that we do offer depending on what your needs are. But I haven't seen a bad time to come give me money personally, you know? So. <laughs> so basically the right time is, do you want an award? Like, do you want a cold traffic monster VSL? If you want one, you don't have one right now. You should be talking to C4 media. That That's really what I'm hearing from. Pretty much. Yeah. If you want some that scales, <laughs> you know, we work with like, I'm pretty sure if it's not number one on ClickBank, it's about to be, we have one of the top like offers on ClickBank uh, for our clients right now. All producers. Nice. So. Yeah, I know you guys are doing good work. And then, yeah, because we set you up with the ClickBank Experts program. We'll put that link to that profile in the show notes here um, so people can find you through that if they want to. But where else can people follow you two individually and or C4 Media? Yeah. Um, we have our website. We can link that in the description. Uh, you can go there. That's probably the easiest way to connect with us for professional work. And then I have my Instagram, you know, Stefan Vanica, just my first name. Um, yeah. I'm on Instagram you can check out my blog, beatyourcontrol.com. That's probably like my best place to like get a hold of me. My email's on there. Um, yeah. Awesome. Right. Thank you. And then uh, any, yeah, I guess I always like to give a little teaser at the end here. If there's any other juicy hacks you haven't shared that you'd love to, <laughs> like what is something that people are looking at? Or, or, let me ask you this. Someone right now with a video sales letter on their page, what's the first thing they should do after listening to this to run a split test. 
I mean, hire Stefan, get him to produce a <laughs> lead and run it again. You can run the same lead head to head with Stefan's video creativity versus your current video editor. And I'm like, I'm very, I'm hundred percent confident he's going to win. <laughs> so yeah. 10 out of 10 times. I, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's not wrong. So you can definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love, cause you said one of the biggest tests that you guys do is literally just not changing the script, yep. but just running the, running it with new B roll. So exactly. yeah, it seems like, again, if you have a video and you're like, I think it should be doing better, they should mm-hmm. be talking to you guys. So we're, we're, I all just don't know any, yeah, I don't know any other video editors. They're also marketers. And that's kind of like, that was my biggest pet peeve for a long time. Um, mm-hmm. And without the marketing brain side of things, you become this Hollywood cinematic production, which is really cool. And it looks fancy and the client's super happy, but it doesn't convert. And all that numbers is how much money the BSL is going to produce at the end of the day. Like, is it going to make yeah. money? Are people going to buy the product? Yes or no. And that comes down to video infused with a marketing brain, not just video cinematic production. Yeah, mm-hmm. because when you, when you produce video with a direct response you know, mindset, I mean, I, I studied direct response for, I've been studying it for like four or five years or so, right around when I started video, because I'm like, huh, I'm starting video, but I also want to make money with video. So let me study direct response. So then, then like you pick up a few things that like are a little bit, like you wouldn't see in a Hollywood movie because they, they have you hooked because you already paid to watch the movie. But like, yeah in a VSL, mm-hmm. no one paid to do anything. They're not committed at all. So like you do a bunch of little things to spike their attention and make things so mm-hmm. obvious and so clear. Cause like the biggest issue with copy or anything is if something's confusing and if the video is confusing, like people are going to click off and no one's going to watch. So you got to yeah. make it extremely clear and you know, simple to understand. Yep. Clarity improves conversions across the board, both cinematically and copy wise. And so that's kind of what we aim to do with all the videos I've produced for my own stuff in house or for our clients. For sure. No, I love that. Clarity improves conversions. That That is definitely, Dylan snipped that because that's a brilliant <laughs> line for sure. Um, and, and I think with supplements, it's one of the biggest mistakes I see people make nowadays. They, they focus on a really dramatic lead and they're like, oh, this is great. And then you get to their mechanism. I'm like, I'm confused um, by what your product actually does and how you explain it, right? It's just so convoluted who would ever buy that so and you'll see those drop-offs right there in the video where all of a sudden your watch rate just falls off a cliff so no that's super powerful guys and i love that it's pretty much anyone that has a vsl should be talking to you um right now or if they have one coming up they should be talking to you here soon because it'll get better if they work vsls ads you know, Stefan does content for me. I don't know if he wants to do for anyone else, but you know, he's grown like <laughs> my dog brand, like from zero to 35,000 followers in like three months or so all organically using his real same style of VSL, but all just short form stuff. Um, and if you ask him nicely, he might do it for you. I don't know. <laughs> that's that's Stefan question. Nicely, nicely with a large stack of bills. That always helps. <laughs> that, that Stephen, helps will you ask. do my Instagram for me? No. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> Jerry on top. We have a we have a strict approval process for that one, uh, so I mean, it depends. The person has to be the right fit, etc. Because that, that's a lot. It's a lot harder than the people think it is to grow. Yeah, you know, brand on social media organically. It, it's, it depends on the person. I'll do it. Look how he politely said no to you, Thomas. It was really impressive. Not to make you feel bad, but feel like I can't watch your videos. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome guys. Well, um, yeah, really appreciate your time. This is this is fantastic. I always love talking about video and hearing what you guys are doing and seeing it. I know I um, have a couple clients that are working with you guys and um, excited to see their videos and watch them scale it up. So be on the lookout for um, great videos from C4. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks for joining everybody. And don't forget, you can email affiliated at clickbank.com. If you have any feedback, if you like to get in touch, we'll leave the links in the description below. You can follow me at Happy Scaling on Instagram, TikTok, and all those fun places. Kyle, I think you have a new Instagram handle, don't you? Or is someone copying you on Instagram? Mm, no, someone's probably copying me. You should follow them, though. They'll probably produce yeah. more content than me and sell you something. So, <laughs> yes, you could be un- not followed by me or accepted if you look out for me on Instagram. Pretty socially... <laughs> stupid but definitely um follow the clickbank channel for the most relevant content that i'll be producing that you want to watch so that'd be good until next time guys have a good one see you guys and whether you tell people thomas happy scaling see you happy scaling there you go all right see you guys bye